I'm Rachel, and this is Gabe. For 26 years, he hasn't had a girlfriend, which is really only normal for 18 of those. His big, annoying, lonely sadness has started getting in the way of our other creative endeavors, so I'm helping him finally get a love life. Last time, we learned that Gabe's signature, ever-present discomfort, is probably to blame for his romance problems. So I'm going to address this by shoving him into romantic situations, straight into the fire, if you will. But Rachel, I hear you say, if you take someone this chronically uncomfy and shove them into dating, he's just gonna freeze up or something. To which I say, first of all, uh, <laughs> wash your tone, I know what I'm doing. Second of all, you are right, which is why I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to take a framework that has been used and reused so many times that it must be a reflection of reality. And I'm going to stick Gabe, unwittingly, into a rom-com. The rom-com. It's simple and formulaic, which is why I think we have a good chance of making this work. But Rachel, I hear you say, aren't the protagonists of rom-coms usually women? To which I say, hey, what did we just talk about? But also yes, which is why I have found a woman. So for the past week, I've been trolling around downtown to find a woman who shows signs of being a rom-com subject. Intelligent, above average looks, but not a model. Someone who's content with her life, but clearly yearns for more. And here she is. This is Samantha. According to her social media that I found by reverse Google image searching her, she's 25. Every morning on her walk to work at City Hall, she stops at the French Patisserie. And every evening, she stops at the used bookstore on her way back. And we can see from these discarded affirmation notes that she enjoys her job, but she's working at the Courage Desk for a promotion, which means that she wants to do more. And she's got the brains and the chutzpah to do it. And that's for looks. How would you rate your looks out of 10? I don't know, probably a seven. Perfect. And most importantly, she sometimes brings a new succulent to work, which means she likes to care for things and perhaps longs to care for someone. I think it's time she met that someone. The meet cute, a chance encounter with a spark, leaving both parties intrigued and hoping to see the other again. Requiring pure luck and hardly any speaking, this is an ideal start for Gabriel. But today, we don't need luck, because I've stalked Samantha for a week, and know the perfect time to make these passing ships bump into the icebergs of each other. So I gave Gabe a coupon for his favorite dessert, pan au chocolat, and told him that they usually run out at about 8.50, which is when Samantha always rushes out because she lost track of time. This is their chance to meet. Cute. So sorry, uh... Now, I couldn't hear what was happening, but from what I saw, the tension is palpable. Having felt that spark, now they both go to family or a quirky best friend to recount the events. There isn't any romance yet, but what matters is that they've both got the other on their mind. Ooh. It looks like someone's mother is pointing out how they're still not married. I, I don't want my nails red for a whole week, you know? Red's just not my color, so I think I'm just gonna wear the jersey to the game. Now that she's talked to her family, it's time for Gabe to talk to his quirky best friend. Why did you want to come here to talk? Because of the Sonic. You know, like the commercials? We're not even going in. Yeah, but you know, the guys sit in their car and they talk in the, in the Sonic commercials. I wanted to do something like that, just to, you know, shake it up a little bit, be a little, a little quirky. Quirky? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh... So, so how, how's, how's, the, how's the quest for romance going? Okay, I guess. I, I don't really... There isn't much happening. Well, you know, sometimes sometimes it just takes a, a little something that can be made into more, you know? Any any little run-ins during the week that maybe we could pursue? I, I don't... Mm, 
I don't think so. I haven't really. Oh, it, oh well, let's, you know, we, we can jog your memory. What did you do this week? You, uh, you went to work, you did improv, you, uh, you, uh, you how, how was that? How was the bakery? The, that pan au chocolat? Oh, Any, yeah. I, I went there yesterday. Yeah. Uh, turns out, uh, that coupon you found was actually fake, so I didn't, I didn't end up getting anything. Oh, that's so weird. Sorry about that. But, you know, the... Here's something happened. Now that the match has been lit, it's time to, as the kids say, let them cook. In every rom-com, there's the middle phase, where they get time to know each other and find love. But Rachel, I hear you say, they don't seem to have much reason to spend time together. And aren't you trying to get this done quickly? To which I say, feeling mouthy today, aren't we? Besides, I have a plan. Thank goodness. Uh, you, you. This is clearly fake. You guys just been standing. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah. It's fine. Great. Did you get a phone number? What? Just the girl in the elevator. Did you get a phone number? Why would I do that? You're supposed to. What? Do you just get the phone numbers of people you see for 30 seconds? Gabe, you're stuck in the elevator. Yeah. Gabe. Uh. You're, you're. What? Okay. All right. No, let's go. They spent time together. They've grown fond of each other. But now it's time for them to realize that they need each other. This part in the story requires a misunderstanding. Something that one sees from a distance and with no communication decides it means that the other has no romantic interest in them. And based off of something that we've added to Gabe's Hinge profile, I know exactly the way to create that misunderstanding. Keep that, you hold on to that. What are you doing? Hey Gabe, what's up? It was crazy running into you here. Yeah. Wow. Oh, look. Oh, this is crazy. This is the, you guys have been running into each other. Uh, yeah. How Dave, did you? She's, she's reading the Communist Manifesto. How does that make you, you feel? Like, I guess feel, generally disappointed. Mm, like maybe you want to confront her about it? Oh, well, I don't feel that strong. No, yeah, and then and then you, you guys can kind of start arguing with each other about things that aren't actually, you know, like about each other. And then you, you get, races get closer, closer, and then you... What? What? Yes. Uh, first oh. off, I could clearly see you putting that there. No, okay. I, all right, all right. I'll come quick. I'll come quick. Okay. I'm, I just stopped her for two weeks to figure out that she's a perfect girl for you, Gabe. What? And then I made sure that you guys would run into each other. Yeah, I mean, this isn't the first time this has happened to me. So. What? And I said, you know, it's someone my own age this time rather than someone's mother stalking me. <laughs> so see, it's nice. normal. It's fine. Oh, it's not. No, it's fine. She's fine. Like, it's fine. No, this, not... is, now this can be the misunderstanding. So you guys can sit down yeah, and you can talk to each other. You, you, know? you can't just follow someone. Look, Gabe, yeah, you asked you, me to help you find love. This isn't helping. Yeah, it isn't is. Helping. It kind of is. This you, is you not see, helping you guys at all. Some great interaction. I don't know why you thought I, it would be. Sorry. What, I'm kind of hungry. Y'all want to get like some food? Talk about this? I just had breakfast, but thanks. Okay. You, no, you can't. You, you can't. So, Rachel, I hear you say, I was right. 
To which I say, In your way. The joke was strange, very insane. The joke was strange. I should have known. It's comic sans. Yeah, I know elevators. This, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, it seems like it's working. Same.